My name is Patrick McGowan. I'm a winemaker at Torquefola Winery. I'm also a pharmacist and I work at the California Department of Corrections at California Men's Colony, San Luis Obispo, California. I started making wine with my dad in the 1960s and we used to make wine at home in our garage. We learned how to make wine from the Portuguese dairy farmers that were in the area. Torquefola is uh, Gaelic and that it, it means wild boar's blood so on our label we use a uh, wild boar with a little drop of blood that comes out of the base of the neck and that depicts the uh, harvesting of a wild boar for our label. I started helping Dr. Tom Morgan in 1997 at Casa de Caballos Winery in Templeton, California and I said well you know I'm, I'm doing this on a commercial basis but I want to have my own wine I want to do it at home so in 1999 I got my first barrel and I bought grapes and we crushed and stemmed them and then started the process and that's where I am today. At first it was just me and of course my operation was very small I would just make a couple of a uh, couple of barrels a year and I had friends that would help out and then as time went by and as things grew and we wanted to make more varietals of wine I would try to uh, get different people interested, younger folks, and because doing is learning and we've all learned that from Cal Poly. And so I would offer some of these guys the ability to come over, learn about home winemaking, and then of course they would benefit from, from the education and experience, but also get to drink some really good wine. What we look for are actually um, really good growers and the growers pay attention to the fruit that they're uh, putting together. Their, the terroir of the uh, grape growing area is important, but also the grower themselves, how they trellis or how they uh, manage their canopy and then dropping fruit, maintaining that, and then of course canopy management, vector management, and of course all the things that go in the spraying and, and uh, weed abatement and weed control. So there's a lot of things that go into winemaking as well as irrigation and the fertilizer or fertigation, depending on what system the, the grape grower is using. Well, the basic steps are is that you, of course, get the fruit. And when you get the fruit, you have to process it. And the beginning processing is, of course, bringing the grapes to your location, what, you know, in bins or in picking baskets. You take the bins and, of course, you uh, dump them into a crusher stemmer, which separates the um, fruit from the stems on the bunch. So the bunch is composed of berries and the stems. So when you put it through a crusher stemmer, you're going to separate that. And when it goes through the crusher stemmer, it will actually take and crack each piece of fruit is called a berry. It will crack that so that it's available to open up and be able to have yeast go in inside each berry and go through the fermentation process. When you take a home winemaking situation or a small operation, you have hands-on operation to where people are doing a lot of the work by hand and they're making that wine into an individual thing. So it's all hecho a mano or all handmade wine. Winemaking is a very interesting thing because it's a, it's a mixture of science and art and craft. So what you have is the ability to recognize that you have a certain uh, vineyard or great producer that's going to give you exactly the type of fruit that you're looking for and then of course you pick your varietal so if you want a Cabernet Sauvignon or a Petit Syrah or a Merlot or a Malbec or a Sauvignon Blanc you're going to be looking to the proper areas that it's grown in 
whether or not the grower is doing all the things that they should be doing to ensure that it's really good fruit because when you're making wine if you have really good fruit you can make great wine. I've considered making my operation a commercial basis. You have to get bonded through the federal government. You have to pay taxes on, on your wine. Right now as a home winemaker, I, I have the ability to make 200 gallons, which is approximately a thousand bottles a year of wine for family use. But when you go commercial, you have to keep your wine segregated so that it, um, is, is separate from your home, home winemaking operation and you have to keep uh, very, very good log books on what you're making because you have to pay your taxes to the state and federal government as far as your production of alcohol. My son is, is what I call a... Uh, uh, Carter, what do, we, what do we call you? Oh. <laughs> yeah. They're the grunt labor. They're the guys that are doing the labor. They're actually the guys that do the really hard work. They're doing all the physicality. They're toting, they're lifting the bins and dumping them into the crusher stimmer. They're helping with the punch down. They're helping with um, the manipulation of the grapes and everything. I, I have the luxury of doing all the science, the lab work, all the fancy stuff, but those guys work really hard. So the guys that do the grunt work, and we, we call them our seller monkeys or, or, or our grunt guys, but they work really hard and they're actually <clears throat> the most important component of that, but that's a family part. So he's my son, he gets to help, he gets to work, and uh, we have a ton of fun and we all learn and benefit from it. The nice, the nice thing about uh, home winemaking is that you can, you can pick your varietals, you're, you're not stuck with any one thing, you can make as a home winemaker, you can make five gallons, you can make 200 gallons. So you can make anything at the, you can even make a gallon if you want to. But, and you can pick a lot of different varietals if you have fruit available. So if you can have fruit available, you can really have a lot of fun. It's a lot of good experience, a little bit of chemistry, mostly hard work, but the end and final product is a wonderful glass of wine that you can share with your family and friends and this is what it's all about. Cheers.